What's up, guys? Nate, the old school otaku here, and I'm coming to you from my home office, uh, partially due to the fact that uh, my work office has absconded with the um, normal spot of me sitting down, but also because, well, this video actually deals with this office. Over the past couple of years, I've uh, had the chance to pick up quite a few anime figures with the help of Otaku Joe and um, other sales and things online, and I wanted to actually finally sit down and personalize this space just a little bit more. So if you want to check out uh, all the cool uh, figures that I picked up recently that I haven't had a chance to show off, and then also uh, watch as I uh, help get this area picked up, stay tuned. <laughs> And welcome back. So, um, as I was saying, um, this is my home office area. It's still a little bit on the cluttered side, um, and I actually will be getting to that at some point. But um, I wanted to start off, and uh, basically, you'll notice there's a uh, pretty large void right here. Um, well, originally up there in that area, there were a bunch of... Um, old uh, model boats and things and I'm personally not into that type of stuff. Um, this house has been inherited from family um, so there's some stuff from uh, from family here and around and I've over the over the time I've been replacing bits and pieces of it adding things um, like the uh, cool uh, poster uh, that Ruchan had gotten for me from uh, the uh from the writing being kickstarter with the uh um signatures and stuff like that and then just kind of turning this place a little bit into my own and part of that is um paper clutter and things is trying to figure out where certain stuff will wind up uh, going and whatnot but um <clears throat> i figured you know in this unfortunate trying time of uh uh uh, self-quarantine and flattening the curve and all of that uh, interesting times that we're sitting here in this global pandemic um, of trying to keep myself busy um, outside of work and normal things and doing things that um, don't entail editing videos for YouTube. Um, if you want to know more about my thoughts on editing videos for YouTube, uh, well, I made a whole entire uh, channel update video a few months ago um, talking about my um, uh, personal struggles with uh, sitting down and trying to edit videos uh, for you guys, because despite the fact that I have definitely filmed quite a few, and that part I love doing, I love sitting down, talking, doing all of this stuff, but uh, the actual editing piece has always been difficult for me. So rather than sitting down and doing that um, in order to get content out to you guys in um, these these times in order to keep myself busy I've been watching stuff and doing things and um, deciding to do little projects like this uh, but uh, this did open up a cruel opportunity and that is to finally get my um, collection of uh, figures out and up somewhere so I uh, <clears throat> took some of those um, uh, some of those pieces, uh, put them in storage and whatnot. Um, and now that I have this extra space, I now have somewhere to actually display these figures that have just been kind of sitting around here waiting for their chance to shine. In fact, a couple of these I actually picked up back at Yomacon um, in 2019, and I hadn't had a chance to actually uh, show them off. Uh, to you guys yet because uh, I haven't made a Yomacon pickups video yet so I mean I, I picked up a few things when I was at Yomacon I actually picked up a couple of VHS um, tapes uh, got 
Odin, uh, Photon Space Sailor Starlight. Uh, so that's definitely cool. It's a this is definitely a guilty pleasure uh, old school anime of mine. Um, also, Planet Blasters. Um, this is uh, the Starline Pictures Harmony Gold uh, dub of this old show, which I believe is uh, Bayo or B B A O H, um, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, yeah, this one's really hard to come by. It's kind of cool. Um, and then also picked up uh, uh, the Prelude. Um, this is uh, from uh, Idol Densensu, Densensu Eriko, uh, which is a show that um, I recently had uh, gotten into, uh, partially because uh, some of the fan subs that have been coming out from this, and um, I actually started uh, curating the artwork and things in order to put into um, uh, the anime, well, not the anime database, but uh, the TV DV, because um, I use Plex, personally, um, and Plex naturally pulls from the TV DV for, um, or the television database and the movie database for its metadata. So I've actually gotten involved with uh, um, helping to curate the content on there for a lot of these old and obscure shows. Um, and that one I actually pretty much built from the ground up based off of the synopsises and things that are online that I've been able to find from the episodes that actually have existed and we have fan subs and things for now. So um, that's that's really cool um, to pick up that. The, uh, the prelude here is a um, collection of music videos. So um, that's... <laughs> Pretty, uh, pretty neat. Uh, thanks, Otaku Joe, uh, for um, for those ones. Um, and then, while I was at Yomacon, I picked these up. Um, he had recently gotten them back from uh, one of his recent trips to Japan, and it is a Emeraldus and a Mattel figure. Um, both of these are in the design from the Cosmo Warriors Zero or Cosmo Warrior Zero um, anime. And um, there's also a Harlock figure that uh, comes with it. But um, I didn't pick up the Harlock figure as much as I am a fan of Matsumoto's work when it comes to um, the characters I actually care for. It's Emeraldus and Mattel. Uh, Harlock, to me, doesn't matter as much. And I decided to spend the funds for the third figure on something else, um, which I believe was the uh, full Laserdisc collection of Idol Densetsu Eriko. Um, I figured that was a better um, spend of my uh, funds rather than to pick up the, uh, the Harlock figure. But... Let's, uh, I haven't opened these, so, um, now is the time for us to sit down and actually, uh, open them up and get a real good look at the inside of these. So, um, over Christmas, um, my, uh, brother-in-law and my sister, uh, gave out some presents, and one of the presents that they uh, gave out is this uh, really sharp knife. In fact, the first time I opened this thing up, I was playing with it a little, had pulled the um, safety tip off of this thing, and uh, was just kind of running my finger along it, and um, hadn't quite noticed as I was doing it that I actually went down and basically went BAM onto my finger with the sharp end, and it just sliced right through um like butter and uh that was uh not painful at first but it wound up being <laughs> very very painful um i uh lo and behold i um ever since that unfortunate accident um i have been a lot more cautious with uh with this ever since um, I know that might be a little hard to, uh, believe, but, um, it is true. So, uh, yeah. 
it is really sharp and uh, works really well. So um, this was actually boxed up with um, a couple sets of cellophane uh, that were taped together. So I just needed to untape that. And so I could take that piece off and then I should be able to get this piece off here as well. I like to try and keep my stuff in as pristine of a condition as I can uh, when it comes to the boxes because while I don't necessarily care about the boxes too much, I mean, this stuff, it, this stuff is designed to be outside of its box and displayed. Uh, you really can't, I mean, you can't see her very well inside here and she's, you know, all cuffed up and got like foam and stuff on her. It's just, it's sad. So uh, I want to actually, you know, be able to see and enjoy, but I don't want to throw the box away. I don't want to um, damage the box too much because ultimately, um, when I move, there is nothing better to store these figures in than the original boxes that they uh, they came in. So that is uh, the reason for that. So um, pulled this out here, and I apologize if. Um, it's a little difficult to try and see what I'm doing. Um, hands here, I don't have a table. Um, this is kind of the first time I've uh, done one of these in this way, but um, pulled the box out here and uh, comes with a uh, stand. So pull the stand out of here and yep, um, as I thought, it even says it on here. Uh, Cosmo Warrior Zero. So, <laughs> that's uh, pretty cool. So it's got a little stand here. And yeah, looking looking at the figure, there's a couple of little tabs down at the bottom of this bust that uh, I can utilize. So let's see. What do we got here? Oh, a couple, couple more pieces of tape. Holding this all together. This is packaged really well. Um, I mean, most of the time I've not seen figures and stuff like this not packaged well. So, it's to be expected. I think, at least, um, it's to be expected. But, uh, there we go. Now I got the plastic off of here and we can see this a whole lot better so um oh <laughs> she has a noose around her neck unfortunately uh right back here so let's uh get this uh poor noose off of her because that's really sad that is so very sad um ooh, this is tied in here Quite well. Good job. It's not uh, completely easy to pull apart, which is a good thing. All right. I got enough of the noose off here that I can get her out. Yes. All right. So. Now she is out of her packaging for the most part. Um, there is, um, is this tape? Or is there tape on it? Yeah, I think there's tape on this a little bit. Mm. I really don't want to take my knife to this. But I also want to be as careful as I can pulling that off too because I mean, this is a pretty robust uh, figure. Um, I believe this is supposed to be PVC. Uh, yeah, it's really hard to tell uh, <laughs> whether or not it is, but it definitely feels PVC. Um, this definitely does not feel like, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, it doesn't feel like porcelain. I do have a porcelain Mattel figure that I believe I have um, talked about here on the channel previously. Um, probably in the 
uh, walkthrough of the old otaku abode uh, before I had moved. And there we go. So we now have her out of her uh, area. So see, it's really just a uh, just a bus um, with a couple of pegs here. So it looks like the pegs go down in and there she is ladies gentlemen and uh non nbs um or nbs i'm still trying to learn the lingo uh but uh yeah nbs um or non nbs uh non binaries um yeah so here is Mattel. It's a really nice uh, design, actually. I am quite pleased with this. Um, I think this is basically worth um, every penny I paid for it, to be honest. Um, really nice quality on the uh, on the extrusion and the doing up. Uh, the texture on her palm hat and everything is really nice. Um, I like the blue um, outfit. I think it suits her a lot better than the black generally does. I understand the whole reason for her to wear black like she does, uh, but I like her in the lighter colors because um, I think it just really does her well um, overall. Uh, you know, it uh, Mattel can um, mourn enough, um, has mourned enough, so I think she's uh, deserving of more brighter colors so uh yeah that one's that one's really nice so we'll set her there next to her sister um and yes i do know that uh depending on which canon you subscribe to uh the two of them mattel and emeraldus are not actually sisters but uh the more recent canons um have them as sisters and I kind of I kind of like that canon for them um, so yeah <laughs> that's all I have to say about it I just I just like that specific canon that they are sisters so let's go ahead and get this back on and um, you guys probably don't need to listen to me talk while I Put this away so I'll probably cut away or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out in post. See you in a minute. All right, now um, we did Mattel, so on to Emeraldus. Good old Auntie M. I don't think anyone actually calls her Auntie M. think she might uh, object to that name, potentially. <laughs> but yeah, all right. Now I think these are copyrighted 2004-ish. Yeah, I think so. Uh, which would make sense, because that was around the time that uh, this show, Cosmo Warrior Zero, uh, came out. So it makes sense. So it's, I mean, it's definitely cool to see these figures um, still around and able to be picked up. That is definitely cool. All right, let's get Emeraldus out of here. And hopefully not drop her base on the floor this time. Hey, progress. Progress indeed. Oh, I see. The, um, this thing was in here held in by tape. 
I guess the tape must have come off. On the other one, which is why it had fallen out. Um, this one, the tape wasn't like that, so it didn't fall out. And it's pretty much the exact same thing. So, it's cool. All right, Emeraldus. Oh, yep, just like the other one, this one's actually being held by tape on the four sides, so we'll go ahead and... Undo the tape. Uh, like I said, this is rather sharp. Um, I think I actually cut some of the plastic off with this. Uh, <laughs> knife. It is a heavy-duty knife. Um, definitely heavy-duty. Yep. <laughs> Got through a little bit of the plastic, unfortunately. Um, but yeah. Still not too horrible. So uh, Emeraldus... Uh, uh, unlike her sister, was treated a little bit more humanely. She actually has a waistband instead of a noose. So let's uh, go ahead and untie her waistband. Um, and get her out of her bondage so that she can be free to sail the Sea of Stars, as is the covenant that she has with her, uh, with her friends. Um and all that fun jazz. Whew. Yeah, this is a little bit more involved than the other one. Uh, there we go. Because uh, since it is was around her waist, it was actually around her waist and under her uh, arms there. So I'll go ahead and take off the Bits of foam protecting the fiddly bits around the fingers and whatnot. And, oh man, there's some really nice fine detail on this one here. Um, Emeraldus has uh, considerably more um, accoutrement to her than uh, Mattel does. Uh, because uh, Mattel is kind of just like a passenger on a uh, trip. Whereas her sister, Emeraldus, is um, definitely very much takes on the visage of a pirate. Um, she goes around, does space party things and whatnot. So um, she's got, you know, she's got her blaster, um, her knife on her shoulder, and um, her laser uh, uh, a gravity saber. Yeah, gravity saber would be the correct term that they use um, on her side. So there we go go and we've got emeraldus so like i said this is really nice uh nice work here and i'm sorry guys if the lighting isn't as good i will attempt to uh get some more better closer shots with my cell phone uh, my cell phone actually records in 4k uh so i can get some really good uh really good footage up close here with these um in a little bit more light so hopefully it should look a little bit better but yeah like this is uh really really cool um man the two of them um turned out really well i mean the key thing about mattel is her hair um very nice you know glowing flowing locks of blonde hair um emeraldus also has the same hair um basically the two of them do, uh, being sisters. Um, I think technically twins, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, so, yeah. Man, I love Emeraldus. So, <laughs> I know um, I have more Mattel figures than I do Emeraldus figures, and that's partially because um, Emeraldus has... Um, is not necessarily as popular of a character as uh, Mattel is. Um, I, Galaxy Express 3.9 was the more longer-running show um, and series, and a lot of people really love it, and I enjoy um, 3.9 myself, but uh, I'm definitely partial for Emeraldus. Um, I love the Queen Emeraldus OVA. 
I uh, really wish there's more stories with uh, <laughs> with Emeraldus in it. So um, she's she's my gal um, amongst the two of them. Um, they're both they're both nice. I like them both. Um, but uh, if I were to play favorites, Emeraldus is my favorite. So <laughs> yeah, let's uh, go ahead and get this one box back up and I'll uh, meet back with you guys here in a minute. All right, so um, with uh, those two figures out of the way that I picked up from Otaku Joe uh, this past year at Yomacon, let's uh, let's move on to uh, the next Mattel figure. Um, this is one I picked up uh, a while ago. Uh, well, okay. I didn't pick this one up. Um, Ruchan had actually snuck this one in from Otaku Joe. So, uh, yeah, I am looking forward to getting this one out of its box. So, this is really cool. Um, rare shot of, um, of Mattel holding her gravity saber. So, definitely cool. Um, it's actually talking about the Blu-ray releases of the Galaxy Express 3.9, um, a do Galaxy Express 3.9, and um, I think uh, Endless Odyssey, um, the the three um, three nine movies, um, out in Blu-ray in Japan. So that's really cool. This is a relatively new figure, then, um, if that is the case. Uh, do, do, do unfortunately I suck at reading the Moon Runes, so trying to find the copyright date on here is nigh impossible for me. There are no numbers, um, or no Roman numbers, uh, so unfortunately I do not understand it in order to tell what the actual date is, because um, it looks like it's in traditional um, Japanese date format, so yeah. Unfortunately, I uh, am not good into that, so we will move on from there, and I will try to be as gentle as I can in getting this out of its prison. I want to still be able to utilize this packaging. Um, packaging has been taped up, and it's a really, you know, well, well done tape uh, job, so I don't want to destroy the uh, packaging per se, uh, but unfortunately the tape is something that needs to go away. Now remember, folks, You always want to point your knife away from you when you are cutting. There we go. Because uh, that will help prevent actually physically cutting yourself in the process. Mm, there we go. Some pretty good tape. I am very pleased. Um, yep. Cut a bit of the plastic there. Oh well. A little hole here or there isn't really going to harm it much. To be honest, as long as overall the as long as the plastic covering overall isn't uh, completely damaged, I am fine with it. Mm. This is some. Um, Really good tape <laughs> that was used here.
There we go. Okay. Yes, I should take my own advice and not try to cut myself again with my very sharp knife. Oh, it's doing so well. I was doing so well. Oh, well. Done is done. Hey, I got it free. And for the most part, the packaging is pretty well intact, so that's a plus in my book. <laughs> All right, let's get in here. Looks like one piece of tape there. We can kind of see in a little bit better now that all of the uh, plastic wrap is off. Mm. Mm. Another uh, protective barcode seal. Let's get her out of here. Sorry headphones users. Okay. Mm. Wow. Still kind of smells fresh in there. Um, the backdrop is all in the thing, so there we go. Now this is being held by some tape again. Let's go ahead and cut the tape that is holding the two halves together. Trying to be careful to not also cut through the plastic because uh, this is probably a much sharper knife than I technically need for this task. Um, but at the moment I'm not exactly sure where my normal knife is, uh, though that has been resharpened. Um, <laughs> more recently. Um, if I remember right, uh, one of our friends at uh, Yomacon this past year actually did that. So pull her out. Um, she is not being protected by any nooses. So nooses, nooses. She does have a little bit of plastic around her. Mm. Some plastic down here too. Can she come off the base? Yes, she can. Okay. So plastic to kind of protect the base a little bit. So comes in two pieces here, this one specifically. Um, it's a, basically a much larger model of some of the like smaller models and whatnot. Uh, but it's definitely um, it's definitely Mattel from uh, Galaxy Express 3.9. The uh, base makes that out to be very clear. And uh, yeah, so this is Mattel with her uh, Gravity Saber. It's a much older design, not quite as filigree as um, Emeraldus's design. Uh, Mattel doesn't generally need to utilize um, her weapons so much, uh, unlike Emeraldus would. But uh, yeah, this is a pretty cool figure. I mean, this is one of the tallest figures I actually own. Uh, this is definitely bigger than uh, the porcelain figure I have from Mattel, which uh, comes from the Mattel legend. And uh, it's her with her white, um, her white outfit rather than her standard black or the blue uh, from the Cosmo Warrior Zero. So, yeah, this is really cool. Um, overall, the design is... Um, Not the most intricate of designs. Um, I think, like, overall, this bust is way heavier than this is. Um, this is probably not as solid or as heavy of plastic. Um, 
mold and whatnot. So yeah, and, and I mean, this might not actually be plastic. Um, I don't think it's porcelain. It doesn't feel like porcelain. But uh, I mean, if it is plastic, it's much heavier plastic than this one here. And uh, there's obviously a lot more, a lot more detail, um, which I mean, I might be able to get you a better shot here with my phone's camera than uh, this camera and the light that I have available to us uh, right now. But uh, yeah, I like it though. Um, it's a nice figure. I like Mattel, so I'm not uh, disappointed at all, actually. So that's cool. We'll uh, get this up here. And actually, I mean, let's look at some one of the older figures I got, actually. Uh, I don't think I've ever shown, quite shown this figure off. Uh, this is Emeraldus from Galaxy Express 3.9. So we've got that on here. This actually has 3.9 print, printed on the base. It's a little hard to tell. But uh, yeah, so like if I put Emeraldus next to her sister, um, you can see Emeraldus' uh, gun sword is a little bit more uh, out there than Mattel's is. It kind of looks like it looks like a normal saber um, rather than the fancy gun and whatnot into it that uh, Emeraldus has, but uh, the two of them together kind of kind of cool. But yeah, these will go nicely next to each other. Just uh, unfortunately, because uh, Mattel is a uh, slightly bigger uh, scale um, than uh, Emeraldus is, uh, Emeraldus unfortunately um, kind of gets dwarfed by her, her sister. <laughs> okay, well, let's set these back. And, um, well, that's uh, the end of that one. Um, I still have three more figures to go over, so let's uh, speed this up. All right, so that is it for the three um, uh, Matsumoto ones. So um, the, uh, the next three I've actually uh, gotten before I moved um, here into the uh, otaku abode. Um, so... Uh, yeah, they've been in their boxes since I, you know, first originally got them. Um, and I'm looking forward to finally opening these up and getting a real good look inside here. So uh, we'll start off with uh, Nadia first. Um, this was a new release at the time when I picked this up. Um, I really like Nadia. The, uh, it's one of my favorite animes. Um, just, I think it's a really cool story. Um, you know, it's kind of a coming-of-age story in a lot of ways, and um, I think Nadia and Jean are really good for each other um, together. It's a little, a little odd that uh, Marie, well, spoilers. Actually, I'm not going to go into it. Um, the ending, or at least what happens in the future, is a little odd. Uh, I wasn't a fan of what happened in the movie. Um, or at least how it showed um, the relationship between Jean and Nadia. How they it progressed since the end of the show. In a lot of ways, but I guess... I guess technically Jean grew in the show. It's kind of a coming of age story for Jean in a lot of ways, but um, I guess Nadia didn't really grow much um, in the show. So I guess it kind of makes sense, um, kind of the direction that they had 
gone and taken the two. I think in the end they do end up together, I think. And if not, it's no TP for me, I guess. So this uh, comes apart in two pieces here, uh, the main figure and the base. So that's fine. Um, packaging is not as big or on there. Um, let's see. Her skirt is a little bit flimsy. There we go. It actually moves around, so it's its own separate piece. Um, you can see her underwear and whatnot. Uh, She's got her necklace, which, ooh, okay, is its own separate piece, too. So um, it's going to be a little hard to show entirely, but uh, we'll, uh, I'll do my best. Let's put her on her base. Mm. She's only being held on by the one foot onto the base. Doesn't quite go in all the way. So she might be a little flimsy. I'll hold her a little bit. But um, yeah, this is a real nice, uh, real nice detail, actually. Figure of Nadia. Um, the, like I said, like the necklace piece here, um, not sure how easy it is to see that. Um, the necklace is uh, uh, moves around. Her skirt moves around, so you can you know you can look up and you can see her panties and whatnot. Um, I mean, it's part of the show. I mean, this is the character design of Nadia. Um, she's very uh, skimpy clothed. Uh, she hangs out in tropical climates um, a lot. Um, she's African um, in some regards, uh, so. I mean, she's got darker skin. I think she's supposed to be black, um, but uh, don't quote me on that. Um, she's just generally darker skinned. Uh, they kind of drew her more with uh, Indian um, color scheme, you know, whereas uh, Jean is definitely white. Um, I mean, Jean is French. Um, that's why I keep calling him Jean. Uh, but yeah, this is really really nice um it's good good piece of art i think um nadia is one of my favorite characters from one of my favorite shows so definitely cool little figure um and the i mean the fact that the, the little necklace here uh moves is kind of cool um it's its own little separate piece and her you know her skirt kind of moves around so try and get it on her about where I think it should be but yeah that's cool I like it <laughs> we'll uh, set her down right there okay there we go that is that's Nadia all right the next two are both from um uh cyber formula grand prix future grand prix cyber formula um one is an older collection and then the other one is a newer collection from cyber formula sin um they're both of character asuka um who is a race girl so um we'll start off with the traditional race girl asuka um Asuka Sugo. So she's from the Sugo racing team. Uh, Sugo is a engine manufacturer and whatnot. Um, you know, because this does play into the like the true to form um, ness of of racing is that uh, you know manufacturers of cars and engines 
um, use racing as a way to show off their, uh, you know, their new engines, their new cars, their new designs. And then this is set uh, in the future-ish. I think we may have actually hit the time frame that this is actually set in. Um, but uh, it's kind of set up in this quasi-future where um, they have taken the Formula One racing to, um, I guess, its next logical course um, with tracks and things that are like extremely dangerous for humans of on their own to uh, to traverse. So um, they have these uh, these cars are equipped with AI. Um, in some regards, um, these computer systems that are designed to help the driver through these areas. Um, and some of the courses are actually designed around the fact that they are, um, you know, it actually requires the computer. <laughs> some of the courses do. So, yeah. Um, so it kind of takes it in the future, and that's the whole point of it being um, future Grand Prix um, Cyber Formula. So they still have F1 racing um, that still exists, but Cyber Formula is the new hotness, um, as it were. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is Asuka. She's one of the characters. Um, she is the daughter of the owner of Sugo. And, you know, as you could probably tell, probably the love interest of the main character, which, I mean, it's probably fairly obvious. Um, so this one here comes in three pieces, or four pieces, technically. You got the base, you got the main Asuka figure, and then you have uh, two more pieces that this actually comes with. Um, it comes with a little umbrella which I believe she's supposed to have with her and then it comes with a headpiece so from what I can gather I think her head comes off so you've got her with the visor but then we can also switch out the visor I believe oh her head moves that's cool um, her head is articulating. So I think forehead piece, yep, there it is. Just kind of comes out. Whoa. You know, these figures um, that have the pieces, I mean, that's a little scary. <laughs> let's uh, let's get your forehead back on. Poor, poor thing. There we go. And then that's her without her visor. So I actually kind of like her without her visor, so I think I'm going to leave it off. All right. Oop. Yeah, this is fully articulated, too, in a lot of ways. Um, ooh. i got to look at it down this way. Um, they formed her panties, so for you perverts out there, you can... Look down at her panties. If you so desire, I guess. Hmm. But yeah, there we go. Now it's full in there because she's supposed to be um, sitting with her umbrella out. So here is. Asuka, fully put together. It's a really nice figure. Um, you know, it's not necessarily as detailed as um, that Emeraldus or that Mattel is in a lot of ways, uh, but it's not necessarily designed to be. Um, and of course, obviously, you know, this figure is a sexy figure. Um, she's kind of the eye candy um, through... Uh, part of the show, and I mean, that is 
the point. Um, she's she's the race girl um, in Formula Races and you know things like that. They um, the teams have these race girls that they parade out in skimpy clothes and bikinis and whatnot and um, have them sit around the cars for photos. And the, uh, the one of the things I really like about Cyber Formula is even though it is set in the future and it has you know futuristic things to it, there are a lot of things about it that it really tries to keep accurate um, and paralleling the real like race setup. So you know they have the you know the booth babes, the uh, um, you know the race girls around, and uh, they play integral parts in the story actually i mean they are members of the team so when you talk about the team as a whole uh you talk about the race girls too so that's definitely cool um yeah <laughs> that is asuka and i think i like her with the uh with the visor off um so here's the little visor piece i think i like the visor off version a little bit more so we will stick with it <laughs> like that um be back in a moment let's uh, go ahead and get this one put away and then uh we'll finish her up with uh the last piece those are so much quicker to put away all right let's move on to the last one here so the last one here is again asuka um sugo asuka uh, from Cyber Formula. This one is from Sin, and this is part of the um, Beach Queen's treasure figure collection. So um, she's definitely a lot more skimpy in this one. Uh, <clears throat> by this time in the storyline, um, Asuka had gone off to college and whatnot, and uh, she is uh, still a race babe when she can be um, and whatnot. Uh, Hanging out with her love interest, the main character, Hayato Kazuma. Kazuma? Everyone just calls him Hayato. Um, I think it's Kazuma. Uh, but yeah. So, I mean, she's still around. She's still there. Um, they the team picks up uh, two more race babes and that plays into the storyline a bit too um, where you know obviously you know Asuka being Hayato's love interest for the most part but um, one of the other race babes likes Hayato too so there's a bit of rivalry going on there and whatnot so <laughs> there's a bit of that um, in the storyline kind of Kind of cute. Uh, but yeah, because Hayato is oh so dreamy. And all that. <laughs> but yeah, so this one came from the Beach Babe um, series. I mean, this is meant to be a bit more on the fan servicey side than even the original piece. For obvious reasons. Mm. And I'm not necessarily looking to this piece or any of these pieces for fan service in and of itself like that. Um, I'm not personally big on fan service, to be honest. Um, you know, every anime has got to have a uh, beach episode. in order to pick the story back up or something. Um, it's, it's been part of anime forever. I mean, there's obviously shows that are all about fan service um, and whatnot. <laughs> well, this one only comes with two pieces. Um, see, I'll get off of my soapbox. <laughs> um, as it were. Oh, man, Asuka. Put this piece of plastic around your neck like you're, you know, some uh, some fish or something in the sea getting your neck caught around uh, plastic that us humans are putting out into the ocean and all that funness. I'm going to help you out. 
poor, poor, poor little thing. Just choking on this plastic. Ugh. Man. Those nasty, nasty people put you up like that, and I left you in that box. For all this time, I didn't even realize you had a noose around your neck. I'm so glad I have freed you from your noose. So, yeah. This one uh, didn't take anywhere near as much time to put together because it's basically just one piece. It is literally just Asuka on her stand. Um, this one obviously is a little bit more on the adult side of things because, well, it's a girl in a bathing suit, guys. And gals. And MBs. Um, and non envies You know, whatever. You guys, all y'all, are, uh, <laughs> should understand what this is. So yeah, it's um, well-formed overall. Uh, I definitely, this comes close to where I would draw the line as far as figures that I would like to pick up. I'm not really big on fan service and whatnot, but I do like Asuka um, overall. And uh, I wanted another Asuka figure, so here is another Asuka figure. Uh, Beach Babe Asuka. And she's, you know, doing her thing. Um, she is, like, the top dog when it comes to the uh, race queens. So, <laughs> it makes sense. Um, got cool uh, little, uh, uh, not brooch. I mean, she's got her ring on, um, her engagement ring. And a little bracelet here with, uh, with some flowers. I'm not sure how well that's going to turn out. Um, but definitely cool, and they have the feet really well. Like, her toenails are painted. That's <laughs> that's that's pretty cool. Um, just the detail um, a lot of times. Uh, her fingernails are painted, too. Um, you know, the detail that they have in these figures sometimes is kind of mind-blowing. Uh, just the fine detail that they can put into these figures. It's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, unfortunately my wheelhouse when it comes to anime that I like and characters that I like are, um, you know, a lot older than, uh, your modern fans are. And because of that, uh, trying to find figures of characters that I like are kind of hard. Um, <laughs> whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of this away. And we'll, uh, you know, pick back up again from there. If I can figure out which way this is supposed to go. I guess it goes like this. <laughs> oh, I mean, this actually won't take long to put away. Let's be honest. These, these last ones are really easy to get out. There's not a whole lot to them. Um, but yeah, I mean... You know, they're... It's hard to find figures for characters that I care about um, because, I mean, the animes that I generally care about and generally enjoy and love are old. Old anime. Um, it's kind of hard to come by figures. So, yeah, here is the completely unboxed collection. And now comes the funness of uh, putting them up and away. So I'm going to reset up the uh, shot so you guys can hopefully see it a little bit better. And uh, let's figure out where the final, final resting places are uh, going to be for all of this. All right, guys. So, uh, yeah. Got the shelf back here. Let's uh, go ahead and put these uh, up here and figure out where they're all going to go.
some of those uh, tiered, uh, those plastic acrylic tiered things. I think AliExpress has them. Um, definitely help with the placement so I can actually, so you can actually see everything. All right, guys. So, uh, yeah, that uh, brings us to the end, as it were. I've got them all up in place there. Um, I mean, I think that's a pretty good, um, pretty good spot, actually, uh, where they all are at. Um, 
I may change them around a little bit. And uh, like I was saying earlier, I think uh, I think I should get some of those uh, acrylic boxes and stand things um, from. Uh, well, I mean, AliExpress sells them, apparently. Um, so I might look into getting some of those so I can actually uh, adjust the height on some of them. Because, uh, while well, you know, the big tall ones being in the back are all good and all. But, um, I mean, it's kind of hard to see a lot of the different uh, characters as they are. Um, at least if you're standing at eye level kind of see them pretty good sitting down kind of like how I'm sitting down but uh overall you know it's putting them up on tiers will kind of help because uh you know the taller ones being in the back are fine you can actually see them but the shorter ones you know kind of interspersed and so it's a little difficult to get a good shot of all of them together so it'd make a little bit more sense to um get some more display type things in there so it will uh you know, tiered up, and you can see them a little better if you're looking at them dead ahead, straight on, which um, in a lot of my shots and things probably coming up here in the near future, you're probably going to see a lot of those. So part of the other re whole reason of getting this um, set up this way is to um, get this area looking a little bit nicer as a set, as it were, um, because, you know, like I said, I can't actually... Uh, utilize the normal shot uh, with the DVDs and everything behind me like I normally would for uh, videos. So um, getting a little bit more an anime par paraphernalia around here will, um, you know, kind of brighten up the space and um, feels nice having my uh, my stuff there. So um, it's cool. Uh, now I need to find a place for the empty boxes to go, um, but I will figure that out um, another time. And of course, uh, there still is quite a bit of more cleanup that needs to happen around here. And uh, like I said, you know, maybe coming up here in the future, we'll uh, go over what I've done with my server. I mean, you can kind of see in some of the shots, I've got three hard drives sitting up there. Um, I've actually done quite a bit of work uh, replacing those are older dead drives. Um, well, they're not dead per se, but they are dying. Um, and so I replaced them with three new drives, which was a pain. Um, but uh, it's it's increasing the space because um, I'm a bit of a data hoarder. So uh, there is a little bit of that there. But um, anyway, I think uh, that is pretty much it for this, um, this episode, um, as it were. So thank you guys for tuning in. Thanks for, um, sticking with me through this as a kind of combination unboxing and, uh, and un, um, uh, and, you know, showing off of some pickups at the exact same time, as well as, uh, just kind of going over these figures and getting them into spot. Um, so hopefully the footage that I shot of the final placement and everything will be, uh, cooling in there. And, um, you know, hopefully my, uh, uh, my cell phone's camera doesn't uh, too far outshine my normal uh, video camera. Uh, unfortunately, it can only shoot in 4K for up to five minutes at a time. So obviously, uh, taking some of these long shots that I tend to do uh, don't quite work out well with, uh, with that. So, um, you know, I'm looking to upgrade my stuff at some point in time, but uh, for now... This is what we have, and this is kind of what we're going to deal with. So uh, anyway, I think I have blabbered on long enough. So once again, thank you guys for tuning in. This is your first time. I encourage you to, um, well, again, thank you. Um, I'm uh, glad that you actually stuck around for all of this. So if you like what you've seen so far and haven't done so yet, I'd encourage you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and get the bell on um, and whatnot uh, so you can be put front row and center whenever I release something new you'll get a notification um, if you use that notif notification bell and uh, you know feel free to go ahead and follow me on Twitter uh, Facebook um, Tumblr and all of those will be in the link in the description uh, where you can find all of that and you know you know if you want to go ahead and check out my patreon um, and whatnot but it's you know you don't have to do any of that um, just by watching this is perfectly fine enough um, and hopefully you like my content and want to see more so go ahead and give a look um, at to what else I have to uh, offer and hopefully we'll get some more of these videos out to you guys in much more frequent fashion here and um, as always um, well okay 
not necessarily as always, but you know, definitely um, in this time, stay safe out there. Wash your hands, all of that um, stuff that you're supposed to be doing. So, um, you know, I, I've got a I've got a video planned um, that is a little bit more in line with the whole social distancing thing and uh, you know, self uh, uh, self isolation and all of that. So, hopefully, that should be out to you guys relatively soon. And um, in the meantime. Uh, while waiting for that uh thank you guys for tuning in this is nate the old school otaku signing off boxes boxes empty empty boxes the best part of putting up figures in their spot is finding where the boxes end up